All right, Algebra 2, we are continuing solving rationals. Some of you were not here on Thursday, so you did not see this material. Um, we have today to basically master it. Uh, today and tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a review day. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about this again. Uh, I'm going to do a little a quick review for those who already know it and a little bit of a lecture for those who don't. What we're doing now is we're basically solving equations that are called rationals. And rationals, y'all are just fractions, right? There's a 4 on top, there's an x minus 5 on bottom. It's just a fraction. Rational, same thing as fractions. But there's just little tricks to do it. And the quickest way to solve these types of rationals, the universal method for doing that, is to make everything have a common denominator. And there's a process for having the common denominator, right? Whenever you change something on the bottom, you have to change something on top. So let's just go ahead and get into this, and let me show it to you. Uh, I'm going to use black ink for now. What am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I set up these problems, my thought process behind these. I like to set up my skeleton as close by under my equal sign as I, I can. And for those who don't remember, the fastest way to find a common denominator is to multiply things together. But what I'm going to first do is I'm going to basically write down everything I already know about this problem, i.e. I'm going to copy it. So let's see what I did. So check it out. All I did was I rewrote the original first problem. That's it. It's just that I gave myself more room to work with. So technically, on these types of problems, when you have one here, you can go ahead and extend to that side if you'd like to do the same thing. But I just show my steps the way I show it. So with that said, uh, the fastest way to find a common denominator is to multiply them together. So x minus 5 times 2x minus 3. So the common denominator is going to look like this. It's going to look like both of these put together. So, all right, x minus 5, what am I missing from here? I'm missing the 2x minus 3. I'm missing the 2x minus 3. And if I put it on the top, I have to put it on, I mean, if I have to put it on the bottom, I have to put it on the top. Now I'm going to go over here, check out what I found for my common denominator. Again, I just multiplied these together. And sometimes you're just trying to fill in the missing pieces, which will make sense as we go forward. So now I look over here, what are my missing pieces? Well, I have 2x minus 3, but I also need an x minus 5 down here as well, too. So then I have that, and if I put it in the bottom, I have to put it in the top. Another word for the bottom is denominator. Top is numerator. So here we are. Here's what's cool. When we get to this place, uh, we can basically do something that's really neat. We can take all this information and scratch out the denominator and basically ignore it. The only thing the denominator is good for uh, when it comes to these problems after we do this process is basically finding solutions where it can't be this. And how do we know what that is? Well, uh, denominators can never equal zero. So denominators can never equal zero. So go to the original one, and I'm going to say x minus 5 equals zero. When I solve for that, I end up with x equals 5. If you're lost, just pay attention. x cannot equal 5. Why can it not equal 5? Because if I plugged in a 5 right here, I would get 5 minus 5, which would give me zero. I can't have zero in denominators. So no matter what I find for my answers, this right here cannot equal 5. I'm going to do the same thing to 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to add my 3 to both sides because all I'm doing is solving where this thing equals 0. Then I'm going to divide by, oops, by 2, not 3. And then I'm going to get x equals 3 over 2. I'm going to get x equals 3 over 2 right there. So what that says is if I plugged in 3 over 2 into this denominator right here, I would end up with a 0. We can't have that. We do not want zeros in denominators. All right, cool. So let's go back to the original problem. Uh, the original problem now is just this top part. Do you see it? 4 times 2x minus 3, 4 times x minus 5. Um, do I have more room to solve this problem? Not tons. I'm gonna, it's going to look kind of ugly, but I'm going to do it down here. I'm going to draw this part down here. Uh, 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Um, that's a terrible two. That's negative 12. Um, and again, I'm solving this stuff right here. I'm solving this thing. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times negative 3, negative 12. Then equals 4 times x is 4x. Uh, negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. And then I have to basically solve this. At this point, this is a regular equation, y'all. This is a regular equation. So I'm going to add 12 on both sides. Um, and then I'm going to subtract my 4x as well on both sides at the same time. And again, if you're lost, y'all, it's a regular equation. That's all I'm doing at this point. So 8x minus 4x is 4x. 
Um, negative 12 plus 12 is 0. That cancels out, so that's nice. And then 4x minus 4x cancels out. That's nice. And then negative 20 plus 12 is negative 8, which gives me x equals negative 2 for my answer. So I found x equals negative 2 for all of this. Uh, the extraneous solutions would be you want to go in and like plug in negative 2 to see if it works, but I don't want to do that right now. I'm not interested in it all the way. Um, so this works for me now. Extraneous solutions really matter when suddenly we start with like the x's right here and we end up with something that says like x squared, right? Once we see like x squared, that's when we probably know that an extraneous solution is going to come along. Otherwise, this is it. This is how you do these problems. So this is the first little main lecture, and I'm going to solve the rest of these in different videos as well, too.